for our Lord and Savior. He was faced with all kinds of situations. Uh, he went through all kinds of crises. Uh, there was a time uh, there was, um, I mean, there was, I mean, they were in the high seas uh, and waters came uh, into the boat. Uh, everybody was panicking. He was sleeping. The first time I read that, I said, how can somebody be sleeping in the midst of crisis? Uh, I seem to say nothing was happening. And the Bible, listen, the boat that was used uh, is the kind of boat that uh, water was splash. Water was actually splashing on him. Yet, the Bible says he slept. I want to be able to sleep that kind of sleep. Uh, I want to be able to have that kind of peace and confidence. Uh, when the challenges of life comes. Uh, and I want you to know that it's a promise uh, that God has uh, for all of us, his children. Jesus said, uh, he said in John 14 verse 27, he says, my peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not like the world gives, uh, in our assures us, let not your heart be afraid, neither let it be troubled. Uh, you can be in the midst of trouble and not be troubled. Because Apostle Paul here has shown us uh, that uh, you may be persecuted or facing persecution. The fact that you are persecuted does not mean that God is not with you. Amen, somebody. In fact, uh, most of the time, uh, the crises that we go through are, are in indication, rather, that God is with us. Uh, the word crisis is from the word, uh, is a Greek word, crisis. Uh, K-R-I-S-I-S. It simply means uh, a turning point in a disease. Usually, this is the meaning, is the point, uh, it can refer to the point uh, where something gets better or something gets worse. And I want you to know that's why crisis is a turning point, uh, a time of testing, a time of difficulty, a time of intense difficulty and danger. And we are laying a foundation uh, this morning on the subject of how to manage crisis effectively. Because God wants us to be effective managers of resources. In the first service, I said not everyone but responds to crisis in the same way. Then the second thing that I said upon which we stopped was that when it comes to managing crisis, we only have two options. And I gave you different scenarios of how people, uh, the options are. By the special grace of God, uh, what I want to dwell on in this service uh, is uh, another important foundational knowledge uh, that you must understand about managing crisis, uh, which is uh, crisis uh, will test uh, and prove us. Every crisis that you and I are going to face uh, is going to test you, will test your person, will test your character, will test you on every front. Crisis is a tester. Crisis has a way of testing us. You know the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21, it says prove all things and all fast to that which is good. Psalm 26 verse 2, David said, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. The word examine is the same word as test. The word examine, the word prove is the same word. It was saying, test me, O Lord. Test me and try. The word try means to refine. Those three words, examine, prove, and try, is talking about uh, the test uh, that you and I are going to go through. Listen to me, God's people. The crisis that this world uh, has found himself uh, this COVID-19 pandemic um, is testing our resilience, uh, is testing our convictions, uh, is testing our joy, is testing us uh, on various fronts. Uh, God did not say that you will not be tested. Uh, God will not say that you will not be tried. Uh, but what God says is that at the end uh, of every test, uh, God wants you to come out victorious. And victorious will be in Jesus' name. 
before I, I, I still feel like going back to the text, 2 Corinthians 4, you will see in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17, uh, that Paul now went ahead uh, to assure us uh, that whatever crisis comes uh, to test us, uh, we are sure of one thing. It says our light affliction or crisis, uh, which is what? For but a moment. Don't say for the, a moment. Everything that has a beginning has an end. And I want you to know that uh, mm. this crisis is not going to be forever. Amen. It says it's working what? For us uh, a far more what? Exceeding and what? Eternal weight of glory. Mm. Some of them say it is working for my good. Come on say like somebody say it is working for my good. That's what the Bible says again in Romans 8 verse 28. Uh, and we know. That all things, say all things somebody, good and bad. The Bible says all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose and grace. So I wanted to know that in, in as much as crisis will test us and this crisis is testing us, the good thing is that by the grace of God, you will come out victorious in Jesus' name. I want to dwell on briefly this morning um, the ways some of the ways um, that this crisis will test you and I how does uh, the crisis of life how does it test us number one crisis uh, will test uh, your bearing capacity that's what we call bearing capacity in civil engineering and metabolology you see if you want to build a house uh, they will have to test the strength of the soil why? So that uh, whatever you want to put there can what? Can stand. Listen, crisis will test your bearing capacity. What you can hold, what you can contain, what you can handle. At times some people are saying, God, promote me, promote me, promote me. I once had this very first funny testimony by Pastor He at Adeboe. He said, somebody came to meet him. He said, sir, please pray for me. Pray for me. I want to be part of the people that will be financing the convention of this ministry. He said, he looked at him and he laughed. He said, are you sure? He said, I'm very sure. He said, are you sure? He said, I'm sure. So he prayed for him. And he went. After one week, he came back. He said, sir, I didn't say that they should fire me from my workplace. Because he actually fired him. Amen, somebody. <laughs> they fired him. So he said, ah, this is not the prayer. That I, you know, I bargained for. I thought they would promote me. Then Baba started laughing. He said, why are you laughing? Ah. <laughs> he said, God has answered your prayer. He said, how? He said, there's no how you can be on that current level of salary and you'll be able to finance the convention. I mean, I have some friends in the Redeem. I know that when they do their convention, they feed people. Amen, somebody. Imagine feeding people for one week, morning, afternoon, and evening. Someone was telling me the number of cows they killed some time ago, running to millions of naira. Amen, somebody. So he said, he said, God has answered your prayer. <laughs> you are the one that said, ah, you want to undo more? God wants to give you room for greater expression. You see, that was when he met someone who introduced him to a line of business uh, and to cut the long story short. Uh, mm. God started expanding his capacity. He was able to handle more so that he could do more. So listen to this. Uh, one of the things crisis does is that it what it tests your bearing capacity. Our capacity to undo things. Uh, one of the things this crisis will test uh, is your ability to handle things. Uh, God wants you to handle more. So listen, don't complain because of this crisis. Listen, God will use this crisis to enlarge your capacity. Some people are not saying amen. Listen to this. Listen to this. That's why you must look at crisis uh, from the biblical point of view. At times it's painful. At times it's difficult. Uh, at times it's not convenient. Uh, but listen to this. Uh, God is using it to stretch you. Say stretch me. The Bible says in Isaiah 54 verse 2 and 3. It says enlarge the place of your water, your dwellings. Uh, stretch forth uh, your curtains and your habitation. Why? Verse 3 says... Because you're about to break forth. Sometimes you say, I'm about to break forth. 
Let me give you a good example. If you look at Joseph, Joseph found himself as a slave where in Potiphar's house. Do you know that that crisis started testing his bearing capacity? You will see that in Potiphar's house, uh, his capacity to handle things was tested and he began to grieve. Listen to this. Uh, he left Potiphar's house. Uh, he found himself where? In prison. His capacity again was tested. He did very well until he became the head. You see, that was why when he showed up at the palace, his capacity to handle things had been tested at Potiphar's house, had been tested at the prison level. So when he came to the national level, it was not strange. Hello, somebody in the house. One of the things God said to me is this. Listen to this. Listen, if you cannot manage crisis effectively, you cannot manage comfort effectively. Listen to this. God is going to use this season uh, to test your capacity. Ask your neighbor, say, how much can you handle? You know, at times, the way God answers our prayers is not the way we think God has answered our prayers. At times, some of us think God has not answered your prayers, whereas he has answered your prayers. Listen, this crisis uh, that you and I are going through is an opportunity to expand and enlarge what you can carry and what you can handle. I pray for you that you will pass these tests. Amen. Some of us did not say amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Listen to this. God promotes. How does he promote? Listen. The way you handle the test uh, that has come your way is going to determine your next level of promotion. That's why I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. Uh, you will pass whatever test uh, this crisis uh, may have been bringing or may have brought your way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say after me, say, I declare that my capacity will not fail me in this season. My capacity... To handle more is going to be enlarged and expanded in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, say a better amen. amen. That's the first thing. Crisis test. Another thing, number two. Crisis will also test your leadership capacity. One of the things I've seen during this crisis is this. I have seen the leadership capacity of some of our political leaders. And I must say this, uh, that uh, I'm not too impressed, amen, somebody, except for some examin few examples. Because, listen, you want to know a leader. Listen, you know a leader, a true leader in the time of crisis. Because you see, for leaders, uh, a leader thrives. Uh, listen, your leadership ability will shine through if you're a true leader in the time of crisis. Listen to these. Uh, a leader does not run away from challenges. Amen. I said amen. You know a leader during the time of crisis. Because a true leader rises up to the occasion. One of the things the Spirit of God said to me. I'm trying to look for it. Okay, yeah. It says, your capacity to lead will either shine through or be defective in the time of crisis. You see, if you are truly a leader, this is the time you I, I mean, you will shine through. And if not, this is the time you are going to be given all kinds of excuses. Listen to this. How did, you, how did we come to know Joseph? How, how did Joseph come into reckoning? How did David come to reckon him? It was when crisis showed up, his capacity to lead was what? Made manifest. Look at how Saul was handling the crisis. Goliath was threatening for 40 days. Nobody had an answer. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Listen, 40 days. Say 40 days. Imagine somebody coming up and threatening God's people. Even the king who was supposed to be the leader took cover. Amen, somebody? You know that when somebody who's supposed to be the leader takes cover, that everybody, every other person is in soup. A young boy now came. Say young boy somebody. 
Listen, he came there accidentally. His father sent him on an errand. And he saw the man boasting. He said, who is this uncircumcised beast? Listen, everybody ran away. Listen to this. David what? Ran towards the challenge. That's how you know a true leader. Listen, this crisis is testing my, your leadership capacity. And that's why you need to take this opportunity of crisis to sharpen your leadership skills. So I say, why? Because of where God is taking you to. Except you say you are not going anywhere. But listen, I know that I'm going somewhere. Look at them and say, I'm going somewhere. Listen to this. Where do you have, what is the yardstick? What is the basis of recommendation? Part of the basis of recommending somebody is that that person has handled certain things and has done well. Look at how Joseph led the house of Potiphar. Not one money was missing. Hello, somebody in the house? Not one dime was stolen. Accountability. Amen, somebody? You see integrity. Although, madam, say madam, somebody. Amen. I mean, Madame lied against him. And you know, obviously, Potiphar fell for it. He didn't really investigate. But I love the way the story ended. Because you see, when, when Joseph was riding in the chariot of Pharaoh, I can tell you that Potiphar too had to bow. And including Potiphar's wife. Listen to this. I want you to know that uh, every opportunity that you and I have uh, to sharpen our leadership skills, uh, we need to grab it. Most of the time, people run away from challenges. That's the reality. But listen to this. Uh, the truth of the matter is that challenges will sharpen your ability to lead. You know, we don't talk so much about Mordecai. We talk a lot about Esther. But you have to give credit to what? Mordecai. Listen, Mordecai was the mentor of Esther. Mordecai was the leader behind Esther. If Mordecai had not encouraged Esther to vie for the beauty competition, you will not have had anything about Esther. Esther will never become queen. Amen, somebody? And listen, I said, you know a true leader in the time of what? Crisis. There was crisis. The former queen manifested or misbehaved. They had to what? Find a replacement. Listen, you see a leader. The leader in America say, hey, 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 daughter, go and contest. He said, ah, nobody does say forget about it. go and contest. Listen, he saw something that Esther did not see. Now, she got there. There was another crisis looming. They were planning the execution of all Jewish people. Who went to meet uh, I mean, Esther Mordecai? You see the leader in him. I pray for you this morning. The leader in you will begin to manifest. Yeah. That amen is not born again. Yeah. Where God is taking you to. I had not seen. He had not heard. Neither has he entered to the hearts of men. That's why I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus. The leader in you will manifest in this season in the name of Jesus. God wants to say this to somebody. Listen, you are capable of far greater things than you even think. There are things you never thought uh, you could accomplish. Uh, you will fulfill. Uh, but listen, as you allow God to season you and prepare you, through the season of crisis, uh, you are going to shine forth uh, for his glory in the name of Jesus. Say after me. Say, I declare. Say, I declare that my leadership capacity will shine through this season. If you believe that, say a better amen. amen. That's the second thing crisis will test. Number three, crisis uh, will also test uh, the kind of stuff you are made up of. You know, it's very easy for people to blab. Oh, this is what I can do. This, <laughs> listen, anybody can say whatever they want to say. Listen, you know the stuff. Say stuff. If you want to know the stuff anybody is made up of, let crisis come. That's when you know. In fact, 
One of the ways uh, you know what is in the hearts of people is when there's a crisis. That's why you should not be a people, a people seeker. I'm a pleaser rather. You should seek to please God. Amen. I said amen. amen. Listen, it's important for you and I to know that crisis uh, will make us to know the kind of stuff. Let me ask you this question this morning. What kind of stuff are you made up of? What, listen, when you say stuff, they're talking about the material. Say material. You know, there are different kinds of materials. You have cotton. You have wool. You have what again? Linen. You have silk. Amen. Those materials are not the same. Yes or no? Listen, let me say another language you understand. There is gold and there is gold. Listen, gold is not the same thing as panda. I don't know what I'm talking about. Gold is in different categories. So, so karat, so, so karat, so, so what? <laughs> I remember a story <laughs> that Baba Devo shared that one of his sons, he, I think he went to Singapore for, for ministry, and during the spare time, they went on the tour of the city. I was like, I, 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 I will take you somewhere where they, you know, they manufacture gold or whatever, whatever. And he says, even in that place, you can check your, your gold. They can help you to polish it. And when they got there, they were seeing all kinds of gold. And the person said, excuse me, excuse me, please help me, help me polish this, my gold. They said, what carat is it? They said, ah, it's 18 carat. He said, ah, we don't touch that kind of things here. Ah. He said, it's gold. He said, yes, we know, but we don't touch it. He said, the minimum is 20, I mean, it's 24. He said, that's, he said, eh. he said, he said but it's good. He said, we are sorry, we can't take it. We have a specification here. Amen, somebody. We cannot go lower than this. Listen, he said he, his son in the law fell a little bit. He just ah, but gold did not mean. But listen, there is gold and there is gold. I can tell you without any out of doubt that materials are not the same. First Corinthians 3, you can read from verse 11 to 14. Paul was saying that we are going to be tested through fire. And he was saying, if your material is gold, is silver, or precious stone, or hay, or wood. <laughs> he's saying, listen, imagine if wood passes through fire. What will happen? It will turn to what? Ashes. But when gold passes through fire, what will happen? It will shine through. Listen to me. Let me ask you this morning. What kind of stuff are you made up of? Listen, God told me years ago, talk is cheap. Action is costly. Anybody can talk. Let me give you a good example. Look at Peter. Ah, master, if anybody leaves you, I will not leave you. Jesus told them in Matthew 26. Matthew 26 from verse 33. He said, all of you will forsake me tonight. You will say you don't know me. Ah, you know Peter with his uh, running mouth. Say running mouth. He said, everybody will go, but I dare you, I dare you, can't pay. Amen, somebody? <laughs> Jesus looked at him and said, Peter, before the cock crawls, I mean crows rather, three times, today, you will say, I don't know you. He said, you know what I'm talking about? People do that, say, ah. <laughs> and when he did that, everybody said, ah, 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 I too will not leave. But you know, Stop and I will say, you know. When they took Jesus and they entered into that courtyard, a little girl, say a little girl, he said, are you not one of them? He said, hey, hey, you know, I, I don't know you more. In fact, for you to see how serious he was, he started cursing himself. Then the cock grew. He now remembered the words of Jesus. Listen, when crisis comes, that's when we know the kind of material. We know the kind of stuff. Listen to these God's people. God wants our material to be like gold. That's the kind of material you're supposed to, I mean, to be made up of. God does not want us to chicken out. God does not want us to be faint-hearted. God does not want you and I to quit. He doesn't want you and I to roll over and give up. This is the time for you and I to be courageous. 
One of the things that God told Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, verse 7, verse 9. He said, only be thou strong and what? Of a good courage. Say after me. Say in the name of Jesus. I can't hear you. Say in the name of Jesus. I will not be fearful. I will be courageous. Say in the name of Jesus. I will not deny my faith. I will confess and proclaim my faith to the world to see. Can I have an amen to that effect? In fact, declare after me. Say, I declare that I'm coming forth as gold in this season. You know, one of the things that Job said, Job 23, I think, it says, when he has tried me, I think verse 10, it says, I will come forth as gold. That will be your testimony. That will be your story in the mighty name of Jesus. So, very quickly, another thing, that crisis, how does crisis test us? Crisis will also test your true identity. True identity. Another way of saying is, crisis will test your character. You know, your character is your real you. Your character is who you really are. Don't confuse character with reputation. They are not the same. Reputation is what people think you are. Character is who you really are. And the Bible says you shall know them. Matthew 7 verse 16. Matthew 7 verse 20. You shall know them how? By their fruits. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew 12 verse 33, every tree is known by its fruits. Ladies and gentlemen, now, one of the things crisis does, um, crisis does not only help uh, in shaping uh, our character, it also reveals it. It reveals your character. That's who you really are. At times people can hide uh, under a cover or a covering. But listen to me, when crisis comes, uh, the true identity is made manifest. When you look at those two daughter-in-laws that Naomi had, Ruth and Oprah, you can read the story, Ruth chapter 1. Ruth chapter 1. They lost their husband. The husband of Naomi died. She planned to return home. Both of them said, we'll follow you. But along the way, say along the way somebody. When Naomi said, hey, go back. You see Oprah way bye-bye to Naomi. You see that the more Naomi tried to convince her, as, I mean, to convince Ruth rather to go back, the more she remained adamant, she remained steadfast, and she refused to quit. Ladies and gentlemen, that is someone you listen. In fact, that was a, some time ago I did a study. Do you know that the meaning of that name, Ruth, Ruth means a friend? Or a trusted friend or a companion. Listen, the character of Ruth was revealed in the time of crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that one of the things the crisis of life does uh, is that it reveals our true identity. It shows whether we are truly followers of Christ uh, or pretenders of Christ. Uh, it shows whether you really believe in whom you claim you believe or you are just following back. God wants us to be true disciples. God wants us to be true followers of him. There's a place in Matthew 15 verse 8. Jesus said these people drew, they draw near to me with their mouth but their heart is far away from me. There's a story in the book of 2 Timothy 4. Paul was writing to Timothy verse 9. He says, do diligence to come shortly unto me. He now says in verse 10, he says, Demas has forsaken me. Who is Demas? Demas was once a worker. Demas was once uh, one of the lieutenants of Paul. But you see, when the going, when the going became tough, uh, Demas absconded. I pray for you in the name that is above every other name. Uh, that as we go through this crisis of life together, it will not only shape in you, it will produce in you strong character in the name of Jesus. 
I was so blessed. Something happened during this pandemic. I think that was during the lockdown. I went to buy fuel, one of the filling stations. I mistakenly, I didn't even know. No, somebody was telling me ahead that money is more than five thousand. I, I I give the guy six thousand, and I said I want to buy five thousand. Now I just waited for him to fill the car. You know, he counted the money. He came back. Yes, sir. He said, sir, it's six thousand. I said, no. He said, five thousand. I said, yeah, six thousand. And he counted it. it. You know, I was blown away. He went away. because you know, for some people, that's ah, that's uh, that's uh, that's, uh, that's good money. Let me just pocket it. He doesn't know. I didn't know. He, he gave it to me. I, I, I just said, no, no, take it. I give it to you. Amen. Because I, I was blown away. Because, I mean, current Nigeria, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you see integrity. You see, that was a time of crisis. It was, his character was on the line. He could have lied. If I could have pocketed it, he said, hey. Like people say, hey, oh, oh, give me yellow, you know. And people say, yeah. It's my good day. They don't know they are fighting doom on themselves. <laughs> Listen, when you take what does not belong to you, you are unconsciously digging your early grave. That's the truth. You know, we live in a society whereby some of these things have been condemned and people celebrate some kind of people. The scriptures cannot be broken. The word of God is true because those things have consequences. And finally, my time is up. What does crisis do us? Well, what does it do, Ralph? Thank you, dear. Crisis will also test your faith. I want to ask you a question this morning. Is your faith being tested? I don't know about you, but during this time of crisis, my faith has been brought under all kinds of tests. Your faith will be tested. Your faith will be tried. The good thing, 2 Peter 1, verse 6 and 7, it says, though your faith be tested, though your faith be tested, with fire, God says it should comfort what? Comfort like gold. I want to pray for you this morning. Whatever is challenging your faith, whatever is calling your faith to question, listen, you will not be put to shame in Jesus' name. I feel like telling somebody here this morning, people are probably even laughing at you. People are making mockery of you. Say, yeah, where is that your God now? Where is that your God that you claim, you boldly declare? Look at what is happening to you. Listen to this. As the Lord liveth and your soul liveth, you will not be put to shame. Amen. I said you will not be put to shame. <laughs> your mockers will live to see your celebration. Amen. Those uh, who uh, are mocking you secretly or silently, they will live to see your elevation. That's why you have to hold to your faith. I want to encourage, please hold on to Jesus. Hold on to your faith. Don't let go. Don't let go. Every other thing will fail, but Jesus will not fail. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, the same today and forevermore. Hold on to him. Hold on to him. Now. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to his word. Even though your faith has been tested, even though your faith has been tried, Abraham's faith was tested. He waited for 25 years, but God came through for him. The Bible says the trial of your faith produces patience. Let patience have a perfect walk. Whatever your faith is going through right now, it will come forth as gold in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet, sir. Say this after me this morning. Say, I declare. I declare that my faith will triumph in this season. My faith will give me the victory. Go ahead and begin to worship the Lord this morning. Go ahead and begin to worship him this morning. Go ahead. I feel like encouraging somebody. Listen, your waiting season. Your waiting season is almost over. Hold on to God, hold on to God, hold on to God. You will not be put to shame. You will not be put to ridicule. You will not be embarrassed. It looks like how long, how long do I have to wait? For how long do I have to wait? You won't wait forever. You won't wait forever. You won't wait forever. You won't wait forever. The Bible says, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days, can we lift up our hands and talk to the Lord this morning? Please pour out your heart to the Lord this morning. We have a God who answers prayers. We have a God who cares. He cares about you. He watches over you with affection. 
He watches over you with his love. You are precious in his sight. You are precious. You are the apple of his eyes. You are the apple of his eyes. You are the apple of his eyes. You are, of his eyes. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. Never think for once that you, you are never alone. Even when you don't feel like God is there. Even when it looks like uh, everything is falling left, right, center. The reason you have been kept and preserved is because he's with you. He's with you. And you will not be put to shame. I want you to release your faith as I pray this morning. Lord, I stand in agreement this morning with every family, every soul, every man and woman represented here and those who are watching us live, I mean online, I declare in the name of Jesus that Lord stretch forth your hand right now and begin to minister healing begin to minister comfort begin to minister direction begin to minister illumination the areas where your people need encouragement thank you because your spirit is comforting thank you because your spirit is directing thank you because everybody is lifted in the name of Jesus these words that we have had this morning I pray that this word will produce results. Will make us stronger. Will make us better and not bitter. We will come out of this crisis. Knowing you better. Representing you better. Manifesting your glory. For this new month. I prophesy. As you have spoken to us. Joyous celebration. That's going to be the testimony. And the inheritance of every member of this house. In the name of Jesus, there shall be August visitors of joy. You shall experience August visitors of joy. And your joy shall be made full. Lift up your hands and just bless the Lord this morning and thank Him. Lord, we give you the glory. Lord, we give you the honor. We appreciate you, Father. Can we just stand still, all eyes bowed, all eyes closed? If you're here this morning. You have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. That's the most important decision you ever make. I will pray for you this morning. Knowing Jesus is the beginning. Is the beginning of the life that God has. I don't know Jesus yet, sir. Or you are here, probably you are born again, but not through the Holy Spirit. I want to pray for you, wherever you are. Please lift up your right hand above your head. I want to pray for you. Is anybody here this morning? I don't know Jesus yet as my Lord and Savior. Or I'm born again, not through the Holy Spirit. Do you have any hands? Quickly. Father, we give you praise. If there are no hands, I want to pray for people who are watching us. If you are watching us online, you have not made Jesus your Lord. I want to pray this prayer. Father, I receive Jesus into my life as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. I declare that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I'm washed in your blood. I receive the power to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we please have a seat very quickly?